Meetings with Five Interfaith Group. So thank you all for coming along. So could you just introduce each other, um, introduce each other and say why you're part of Five Interfaith Group? If I can ask, say Louisa first to start off. Hi there, um, my name's Louisa Turner. Um, I started with Five Interfaith Group about maybe two or three years ago. And the reason I went along was I wanted to widen my horizons, as they say, find out about other faiths. Primarily, I'm a development worker with Church of Scotland, Benke Church in Kirkcaldy. And that was my way in to make links with other faiths in the community. However, for many years beforehand, I was curious about Fife Interfaith. And I, I followed them on their website, dipped in and out, and I just thought, oh, I'd like to go along, but I'm scared. Do you know what if everybody tries to convert me? And it was that sort of fear. Um, other people had said, oh, you don't want to go there. They've got two heads, that sort of thing. Um, however, I plucked up the courage and under the disguise of being a development worker with Benike Church, I went along. However, it's developed from being a part of my role as a development worker to being a part of me. And I really enjoyed the company of others from Fife Interfaith. I love hearing about their perspectives on life, sharing their faiths, but just being individual and being normal. And everybody is normal. And the common denominator is love amongst everyone. So I'll pass the baton on to someone else. Is that OK? Oh. Who would like to? Next. Well, shall I be next? It's really, it's really Frank should, should jump I'm, in. I'm Frank Burness. Uh, I've been with the group now for, oh, I don't know how many years. Um, on and off, there, there was a part when, a while when I couldn't do it. But um, I've always been interested in other faiths. I mean, I am a churchgoer myself. And um, I've always been interested in other faiths. And I've really enjoyed uh, what I found out. Um, by going to Fife Interfaith Group. Uh, the main thing is that if, if you look at all, all faiths, um, they all have, at the core of all faiths is the golden rule, which in Christianity is, um, you know, love thy neighbor, treat other people as you would treat yourself. And um, every, every, every faith does have that. And it's, it's good to learn that. And it's good to meet other people. Um, you find that people are people. You know, just because they are a Hindu or a Muslim or whatever, um, they're still people and you get to know them. And we have recently had some new members from the humanist uh, group or society, whatever it is. Sorry, Gordon, not sure the right name. And, you know, that they they, um, they, they, they do not believe in some of the things that a lot of faith believe, other faiths believe in. Um, and one of the things uh, we sort of label it as a belief rather than a faith, because faith seems to be that it's a, there's a God, but it doesn't make any difference. These people have a wonderful way that they want to live. And that, that's what we find out. And that's what I love about Five Interfaith Group. We find out we all are the same, that we all love each other. And that if we really look into it, everyone is special and everyone is a child of God and we say this uh, okay thank you <laughs> thank you Frank <laughs> who would like to speak up next Gordon oh Gordon oh a few Gordon's body will be for you're on mute Gordon if you unmute yourself and then start again I should work now. Should work now. Okay, so, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, I'll speak now since Frank has already referred to the humanist group. I joined the Five Interfaith about 18 months ago now. Uh, there are, the Humanist Society of Scotland have got quite close links with certainly Glasgow and Edinburgh uh, and interfaith groups and do a lot of work together with them. Partly to learn about religions and faiths and how the faith space work but mostly to work together with everyone because, as Frank said, most of our aims, the final results and how we get there is not particularly relevant. 
and also to dispel any views about humanism being anti-religious as opposed to non-religious, which I found has worked very well in this small group so far. Thanks. Right. Who wants to fight it out for second place to argue <laughs> to, to talk about themselves? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm not going to fight about it, but uh, um, <laughs> my name is uh, Judy Hamilton. I'm one of the councillors in Kokodi, and um, um, my role is actually communities uh, at the moment. I'm the convener for communities, so um, these kind of things are very um, close to the work that I do as well as personally. So um, I've, I've been involved in my business group for um, just five minutes less than Frank for a lot, a lot of years. And um, I, what, what I'm motivated by is that I think that faith is a great motivator and the works that I see in the community, you know, like the, the Jewels of Islam was, um, was to encourage women in the Islam faith um, to learn to learn the faith, but also to um, do works in the community that help help everybody else and that was um that was motivated by faith and it was motivated by the fact that some women in the islamic faith felt as though they they didn't really have a role and so um the jewels of islam was formed with them that role and then we've seen like the helping hand from the latter latter day saints have groups that go out and help um just practical works that help the community and support the community is often motivated by faith. So I became very, very interested in the interfaith and found out that people have a lot more in common than things that divide them. I became interested in a funding application that we were chasing to um, create a peace garden in Beveridge Park. And that was a great event when we opened the peace garden and that has a, a pole in the peace garden and it reaches out to all of our communities and it has it has written on the poll, um, let there be peace on earth, and it's written in four and four most spoken languages in Fife at that time, which was Urdu, Polish, Arabic, and English, and and that's in the Beverage Park. And I think that that's what the I think that that's what interfaith is about. It's about peace and it's about love and harmony among ourselves, but it's also about a great motivator for making a difference in our communities. Right, who's next? How about Go Bedon? On. Jump in. <laughs> I think Bedon. Bedon. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bedo Khalaji. Uh, I've been a member of the Five Interface for uh, from the very beginning, so it's been really a long time, maybe nearly nearly twenty years. Uh, and uh, I'm a member of the Baha'i Faith uh, and uh, believe in oneness of religion and believe that the foundation of all the religions is one, and they all come from one source. Um, and um, in the five one of the objectives of the um, well, the five interface is to um, provide a platform uh, so all the uh, all the faiths you know get together and to know about each other because we will become very afraid at the time that when we are not aware of each other and the more knowledge and understanding I have of each other we become um, closer um, so uh, it has been uh, wonderful really to meet so many um, people with uh, and learning about each other and uh, to work for a common purpose thank you Bego. okay <laughs> Do we, oh, it's um, everybody now, isn't it? Do we ask for uh, questions now? Has anybody not spoken? 
Oh, they not popped up at this stage, but I will, as soon as there's anything that pops up, I will. But we've got tons of questions. <laughs> yeah. So, as, as a group, how have you co coped with uh, lockdown and still reaching out to members of your group? You know, adapting to technology like this has been hard for quite a few, like hard for some people. Um, yeah, can, can I just say that we had um, set up, during, during lockdown, we set up um, weekly Zoom meetings and then it went to fortnightly Zoom meetings to catch up. And we just stopped them um, last month as people began to get back into the workforce and connect more with people and their lives became busier. But those weekly um, Zoom meetings for me to connect with other people in Fife Interfaith was really good because during lockdown we were cut off from everybody and seeing a different face from who lives with me at home was lovely and having the chat and the banter as well. So from that chat and banter we then went on to think what can we do on a practical level? There's so many different organisations on the ground out there helping but what are we doing? One of our members is from Kirkcaldy Central I think it's Kirkcaldy Central Mosque, Mansoor, and um, he was, and other people um, from the mosque were delivering food packages to people in the community. So we then um, decided to do a funding application. We got a funding application from Scottish Interfaith, and we gave him some reserves so that he could continue paying for the ingredients to prepare the food, to take the food out into the community. For, certain individuals within our group they were confident enough to go out and mix in the community and they were delivering um food out in the community as well um, from the scottish interfaith funding application we received other monies and we gave to um the east nook food forum um that we, food for the elderly forum um, that we're doing the similar thing, taking food packages out during lockdown to those who were shielding. We also gave um, monies to West Bank Shield Group, who were doing terrific work within the community. And that led on to the connections with the Church of Jesus Christ and the Latter-day Saints being a base for them for a period of time and for them to use that base to um, have an outlet for clothing that they were given, equipment for um, newborn babies, um, just general household equipment as well. And so the um, members of the Church of Jesus Christ Saints um, through interfaith connections um, have been really super, as well as the Muslim community um, that we've had connections with. That's what we've been doing hands on for those that can do it and have been involved in a very practical way and in other ways behind the scenes there's been people applying for the funding as well but connecting and having open zoom meetings for any of the members to join in has formulated a good solid group and the foundations and our relationships and um, getting to know people through banter and um, ignoring our prejudices or our previous um misconceptions about different faiths and religions as well. Um, I'll pass the baton on to someone else, as they say, <laughs> rather than dominating all the time. <laughs> wow. It's been a super group. We haven't been quiet in the background and we have been busy and using our skills, <laughs> um, individual skills, what we're great at um, doing and pulling them all together. I'm just uh, popping up uh, that uh, Ron has joined us. Hopefully, his sound will work. And I was just in touch with uh, Mansoor, who's trying to join us as well. So we might have more of us popping in as we go along. Uh, and from what I see, Frank just dropped off as well. So I just keep managing that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Would anybody else like to mention how they've been coping during lockdown and adapting to everything that's been going on about? That's Mensa joining us now. Sorry. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been working throughout really, so just mostly been working from home, not really adapted to that very well. It's not my thing. I like to be out and about and among people. So, um, but um, also um, because of my role as a counsellor, I've had an opportunity to visit the 
community provision in, in all the seven areas of Fife and uh, seen some amazing um, uh, Louisa re referred to food provision going on for people who have been children or people who felt too afraid to come out, you know, people who were told to stay at home were over otherwise vulnerable and um, it's seen how communities are really pulling together and working together has been amazing and the other thing is how I think that stood out for me is how resilient our communities actually are how they've all just pulled together and 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 dealt with things and then in addition to the lockdown and the pandemic um, on the 11th of August in in Kokodi we had um, flooding as well so we've had communities that have you know um, although we're locked down, social distancing was, was difficult because they were in, in a problem where a lot of the household was damaged or ruined. And um, that, that's that been another example of how communities are just so resilient and they just pull together. They're so good at helping each other. And it's been really, really inspiring to see it. And um, so in one sense, I've I've not enjoyed lockdown personally, but looking at our community, it's been really inspired and really um, blessed, really, to to see what's what 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 people are capable of and and how they help each other. I think it's amazing. Um, I watched the live videos from the Victoria Hospital where the cars got totally damaged and the severe flooding there. And to see that our business was businesses came together to help the staff there to get in and out, you know, and it has been amazing to see the community come together, you know, not just within Kikadi, but all over five, you know, the stories that we've heard and everything, you know, for people just being there for each other. I feel in some parts lockdown has caused that for us to be there, you know, if people need help. And kind of parcels and well community groups as well delivering parcels and then somebody like um scottish gas or um bt um rocked up it's not called bt now open reach um of um rocked up with their vans and kind of made unlikely partnerships really but people have just all mopped in together and helped one another it has been truly remarkable yeah yeah it has been a time that not just within the Fife community, but as a country, we've had to step up, you know, and be there for people that really need that extra help and see, not to think about ourselves kind of thing, you know, be there for others, you know, even though we should be taking care of ourselves as well, but to be able to just give that little part of ourselves to help someone else that might need it. Would anybody else? Oh, have we get something in there? I think that's right. Next one, John. That man's here. Hi, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm late, guys. I just had a problem with the link, but I'm on yeah. now. Yeah. Problem. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm, I'm yeah. being to mute anyone else except for the one who's speaking because I'm being told it's feeding back online right now. So I pass it to Mansour to introduce himself briefly. Yeah. Briefly. Like yeah. Um. Hi everybody, I'm Mansur, I'm the Imam of Kirkwaldi Central Mosque. Uh, I've been here for the past five years uh, and I run all the religious activities that, that take place in the mosque. Um, we also do a lot of community work. Uh, we did quite a lot of COVID relief support um, <coughs> over the last few months. We, we've done uh, about 200 packages to uh, local families in Fife uh, who were struggling. Uh, at the moment, we're still uh, we're building our new building, which should be done by next March, hopefully. I know that uh, I've kept on saying this over and over again whenever anybody asks me. Uh, but this time, I had a word with the chairman last week, um, and they said that next March or by next Ramadan, 
uh, we should be up and going. Uh, we're currently doing a project with um, Five Centre for Equalities on um, uh, over 60s women, uh, just to help them get in touch with the local services, uh, uh, support groups, uh, uh, walking clubs and things like that. We had a meeting with the team uh, a few days ago and um, we hope to do much more work with the Five Centres for Equalities and, and any other uh, community groups that are in Fife. Yeah, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, working working on side of the project. Um, I'm glad that we got to meet the rest of our team. Yeah. You know, and hopefully, you know, we can all make this a success kind of thing. So basically my question again is is it anybody else that, you know, have got like feelings or what are you forward, you know, with lockdown, you know, based on, you know, new restrictions getting placed in again and you know, everything's changing constantly. Yeah, I, I could give a brief update on the changes that have affected the Human Society of Scotland with the uh, restrictions. Uh, very similar to everybody else, but uh, all our staff have been had to work from home for a long time since March. We've got a very small office which has had to distance and it's hitting them quite hard really they're missing all the interaction the work's being done or what what remains is being done but there's some of them getting a little bit down over it all uh, the local groups that we have regional wise uh, have, gone, have gone over to zoom meetings which has worked pretty well really uh Edinburgh has got a, a monthly speaker we have a philosophy group discussion meeting, a coffee morning, and a social a social evening. These have actually got uh, is that okay? Yeah. These actually have attracted more people. For example, our five group our five group meets in Ladybank, which is a long way for people, the rest of five. So we've actually attracted new members by publicise publicising on the Zoom. And you're going to be getting more involved in attending things. Things that haven't worked so well is our street care work uh, going around Edinburgh, Glasgow, Scotland, distributing food, clothing, etc., to particularly the homeless, but really anybody that needs it. That's been, we've been unable to continue with that uh, on a pause anyway. Campaigning work going on. As normal, really, in particular, the focus is, I think, a lot of organisations has been is the uh, hate crime, the post hate crime bill that's going through at the minute. Uh, school visits, not, they've been off. Weddings and funerals have been severely curtailed, if not in number, certainly in the uh, number of attendees. But really, most people that I know in the HSS. Have been have been volunteering as individuals. People really wouldn't know they don't wear a humanist banner. It's not, it's not done through the society, but most people, as I do, the places that I volunteer and work at, don't necessarily know I'm a humanist. So it's not a it's not a badge that people wear. So really, that's there's been some positive elements in it. This lockdown and it has been made to turn, turn into positive, but uh, it doesn't last too long. We, we've had a question come in, which is actually, I think it's quite uh, fortune, actually, a fortune even. Uh, it's uh, are you aware of any members uh, that had problems with digital connections during the lockdown? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so, yeah, so if you like to. Uh, I had to mute a few speakers because there was feedback, so I'm going to put everyone back on. Uh, if anyone would like to, to jump in, I'll unmute you right now uh, and make sure that works fine. But yeah, so a question coming from uh, Facebook. Uh, have you had any members had difficulties connecting because of you know, the internet or digital connections during the lockdown? And have they been left out of the community, you think? And 
So what's your take on that? Um, I would say, um, yes, we can't get everybody <coughs> online and it depends on their equipment. If they have equipment and the internet connection, depending on where they live as well, um, that, that has been difficult. With their for, weekly and fortnightly Zoom meetings, it was... Um, tended to be regular people that came on, the same people time and time again. Some people just don't feel comfortable um, talking via Zoom. Um, other people phoned in as well. Um, so they didn't have, they had the opportunity to connect, but for some people they didn't feel comfortable connecting with Zoom. Um, sometimes it's, it, in the beginning, it was a big learning curve. Nobody had heard of Zoom, so to speak. And it was a case of we were all learning new technology and which actually brought out in all our face and all our personalities is a sense of patience, you know, waiting on people catching up. And it didn't matter what age you were. It was right across the board um, learning the technology. And it's the people's faces or oh, what button do us? press and it's the concentration look as well um but on our interfaith groups um yeah generally we, we did get get some back backlash of um not being able to connect but try to be in, as inclusive as possible and it was up to the individual if they wanted to connect and um, within my own church i'm church of scotland background um i worship in dunfermline dunfermline north and it's a case that um, we had Zoom church services, worship services on a Sunday, a weekly meeting. And um, we also had Bible studies via Zoom as well. And again, people would phone in or they would link in with Zoom. It tended to be the older generation that didn't have the confidence to press the right buttons um, to connect with Zoom. Um, but we were getting quite a few people connecting on our weekly sessions and um, on our worship sessions as well, which was absolutely fantastic. And as Gordon says, um, other members that couldn't, not, couldn't normally meet with us on a Sunday due to their work commitments um, or living elsewhere because they were shielding and they moved to live with another relative in another part of the country. Um, it was a case they could join us weekly um sessions as well because of the technology which has been fantastic to get to know people more as well because of having a little bit of banter before the sessions as well and afterwards and it's that connection that human touch and um, getting to know people that broke down a lot of barriers for us whereas on perhaps on a sunday after a service we'd go through for a cup of tea and coffee like a lot of people do and it's a case that people sat in the same seats talked to the same people had the same similar conversations mm -hmm. but didn't go out with their comfort zone with zoom we played different games as well on zoom to break the ice and we learned a lot more about individuals <coughs> who we maybe have known for tens of years 10 20 30 years but we didn't know the real them, which yeah. is a really sad case of affairs because sometimes in public we have our Sunday faces and um, during the week we have our ah! So it's a case that, yeah, we're able to express ourselves because everybody had that common link of frustrations of being in lockdown, trying new technology and keeping in touch with other people as well. Uh, so but that, but that's for all the... Um, the faith or beliefs that you congregate to to practice as well. So that, 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 that's a perspective because obviously if you have a belief where it's more um, uh, contemplatory or direct realization, uh, it's not about the, the group congregation. So that's actually really interesting. So I guess for uh, for Mansu and Kakadi, it must have been also similar, had to readapt to, to moving online for the Duma because it is after all group prayer, isn't it? So yeah. Well, with our prayer services, um, you you actually have to be in the same location uh, if you're going to pray behind the imam so we didn't have an issue there uh, so we're allowed to do individual worship and pray in congregation it is preferred religiously uh, to come to the mosque and pray together uh, so that you've got that community spirit and people can meet each other on a daily basis uh, but if there is an issue with that there's no problem with staying at home and praying uh 
with the digital side of things, uh, I was given uh, sermons on Facebook uh, live. Um, interactions were done through comments. If they needed any updates, we've got a WhatsApp group with uh, over 200 members of our congregation. I would just send out uh, some uh, notifications to them. And um, if we had any meetings, we actually didn't do Zoom. Uh, as Louisa was saying, because nobody had heard about it. Uh, <laughs> so we were more familiar with Skype. And <clears throat> I, I, I still do you. Oh. That, that jumped. I don't know if you can. Are you still here, Sponsor? Oh, no. I think it just jumped. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, we can resume that. Uh... That's your old technology for you. <laughs> It comes and goes. So, but is there any other impressions there? Maybe Bedok would like to comment a bit or, or Golden? Yeah, the Baha'i community locally, nationally, and internationally also uh, have used uh, the opportunity of technology uh, through Zoom and they have kept a regular uh, devotional gathering. Uh, and uh, not only for the Baha'is, but for all the friends of the friends of the Baha'is as well around the globe. Uh, and we have been engaged in study circle. Uh, and uh, we used to have summer schools at uh, about July and August. Uh, so we have attended a few summer schools through Zoom, the Scottish summer school, and also two from the South England as well. Um, and I have uh, so, and uh, they have been really wonderful to uh, to make new friends through Zoom and to get to know people really, uh, and been fascinated how uh, the older generation have tried really hard uh, with the help of their young generation to to learn about the technology and keeping in touch uh, uh, with the Baha'is all over the world and just really keeping in touch with all the people of the world, really. Uh, so, yes, uh, uh, we have been uh, trying to be, you know, uh, keeping ourselves busy and, uh, and being engaged in, in the, um, devotional uh, gathering. And it has been um, really kept us going. So. We are very thankful to the new technology um, that, uh, and we have realized very much interconnected, you know, uh, and we need to work together in harmony. If something happens, you know, that we are just like a body, you know, in body, in body, if one part of the body doesn't function well, you know, the, the body or so we have learned to really look after each other uh, for yeah mm -hmm. that's great that's fantastic thank you and, and so, sorry in a way also we have been able really to keep in touch with our neighbors locally i think a lot of people have relearned the, the connections because you had to like the, the usual i think Lisa mentioned that the usual setup that all white in many ways. So you had to relearn some connections and some that were neglected just because of being busy or just habit, if you want. So, yeah, so, uh, I just want to say welcome back, Mansour. I think you were cut off halfway through your sentence. Mm -hmm. so, uh, if, if you wanted to have a few more comments, uh, and then I'll pass on to Gordon, who also wanted to have a couple of things, I think, to say. Um, get it on. We can yeah, hear you. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I, I think it's my I think it's my internet connection. Um, we've uh, we've been waiting for a month to get our Wi-Fi on, and it was due to the bad weather and the flooding that happened a few weeks ago, and now has been delayed for about a month. So I'm just using it on my phone. Um, so yeah, we were doing it through Facebook Live. Um, worship can be done individually at home, so we were okay with that. Uh, and most of the interaction was actually through the. Uh, through the telephone um, uh, and if there were any prayer services um, there was no need for uh, any collaboration in that in those situations I would come on live I would lead the prayer service and then they would do their part uh, sitting at home 
uh, and um, m most of our, our community, especially within the Pakistani community, the elders tend to stay um, with their families, so with their children. Um, so we didn't have any issues uh, in that regard with, with the elderly or people facing loneliness. Um, they, they were okay uh, through, throughout the pandemic uh, and carry on to be okay. That's what I was going to add, but you know, like people that don't have and that don't know how to use technology or just don't want it within their home, mm -hmm. yeah. how did you keep that connection with members of the group kind of thing? Um, so th uh, that would be uh, for the ones that didn't have Facebook and, and social media. Um, they, they, every single person I'm glad to say had WhatsApp. So uh, they were there in, in a group. I, I don't think there is any member of the uh, our community that's not on there. Um, uh, so I, I didn't have that issue, but. Um, uh, if, if somebody wasn't on the WhatsApp, we've got their phone numbers as well. So people were contacting me uh, through phone calls. Uh, and that way we made sure that everybody was okay uh, in that regard. Actually, when it came to the COVID relief, uh, uh, when we got donations from our own congregation to give out the food packages, uh, we only had actually one family from our own congregation that phoned in uh, and said that, could you help us? Um, and that was good to hear, which meant that everybody was okay uh, from our congregation. That's good that you've got the WhatsApp group just to still have that connection. Yep, yep. A a any any mosque updates, uh, just send it on the group and that's 200 people uh, have received that. And then I've got my own uh, personal broadcast list. So when I joined here five years ago, the first thing I did was to take everybody's number uh, and then I've saved everybody name by name, just just added the word Kirkcaldy at the beginning so that I've got them on one side of my contact list. Uh, and uh, so I've got every single person's number. Uh, so I can contact them very easily in that regard. That's right, good. We, we got one question coming from the internet. And uh, this question is to Judy. Uh, we can see that the football on screen in the back. How has Judy coped as a keen football fan during the lockdown? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really busy. Um, who's, who's asked this? Uh, I have really missed the football. I'm waiting for my season ticket to arrive. I see that some of them are arriving already. Mine hasn't yet. So um, the football's on the background. I'm not watching that. Um, <laughs> the question is from Nina. I think she's being silly. <laughs> permanently in our house. Um, so... How have I coped? Um, well, I'm the chair of Wraith Rovers Community Foundation, so we've kept some kind of football going in that. We've had holiday heroes, so we've had the um, kids' um, holiday clubs football, so been able to pop down and see that and see how it was running and everything. Of course, they're very, um, they still want to limit the numbers, so we weren't allowed in, but we were allowed to follow it, and we've been following it on social media. So, how have I coped as a football fan? Not great because I like the football <laughs> a lot. <laughs> That's good for everyone in many ways. I think Frank is unlikely to join us back, so I think we uh, we're just going to discuss between ourselves. Uh, if you want uh, the role for Interfaith uh, at this time, if you want, and uh, I, I always think Interfaith is, is really it's, it's important. It's about this capacity of seeing people that are fundamentally. Uh, from a different background, different culture, but understanding that difference, that, that diversity, but actually seeing the connections, I think that's mega important. Um, so yeah, so wh wh where do you see the interfaith movement going uh, at the moment? Uh, and if you want the next few months, because I think the whole world is realizing that this is a very, very serious situation. It's not something that you can just- it's not going away, but- no. Yeah. So where, where do you see the interfaith movement as a way uh, for the next few months? So I'm going to unmute everyone and then just go back after it. Go for it. Good enough. Baby doctor, Louisa, want to comment on that? 
<laughs> Thanks. Uh, well, Interfaith um, 5 have got great plans and had great plans this year. Um, we had a new chairperson um, last year, new committee, and um, the, the new committee are really eager to do things and um, had lots of plans in place for connecting with the community, being present as well. And it's a case that obviously during COVID, we can't be face to face and being out there, but we're helping in, in our wee small corner as we can. We have our annual lecture in November and um, it is planned um, to be held in the Old Kirk in Kirkcaldy. However, um, it will probably be online, unfortunately, um, if the restrictions carry on. So everything's up in the air at the moment, but we'd still go on with our annual events and things that we've got in our calendar, but slightly doing it a different way. Um, we'd love um, new members. We've got over 200 members, which is fantastic. Um, however, a lot of people like to hear about us. Um, we have regular newsletters. Um, and any connections that we've made in the community because we get regular speakers to Fife Interfaith and even online we have regular speakers as well. So it's a case that um, these things are still going on and we're still meeting and we're still following our planned programme. Um, we do want to be there um, to support people. We're a small group, active group. Um, also, we've got 200 members. It's a small active group that do a lot of the work. Um, and for instance, we're, we're there if any one religion or faith needs help. Um, for instance, if um, the mosque needed help with preparation for anything, I know you've got great active members, but members of Fife Interfaith would be there on a certain day to, to help. Similarly, um, looking at connections with Salvation Army, opening up their new premises in Kirkcaldy, um, we're offering our hands-on help to be there on the day. Um, not highlighting anything for us as individuals or as a group as Interfaith, but as a group of members who want to just be there to, to help following our our faith of being social action. Um, so if someone w was yes. interested in uh, the fight into faith at the moment, you, they would still be able to join us. Uh, oh yes, you, you to, definitely, uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. on, our, on our monthly Zoom meetings, um, they're, they're welcome to contact us via the Facebook page or via our website page as well, or um, links through you, you've got Frank's links. And it's a case that, yeah, anybody's welcome um, to come along and to hear about us, um, about how we share different faiths and the various different speakers is so that we're all being enlightened either by faith or by what's going on out in the community. For instance, we had someone from the adult protection team. We've had Ruth McCabe from Fife Council Dementia Friendly. So we're all trained to be dementia friends as well. So if anybody wanted to come along who may have a living diagnosis of dementia, um, they're welcome to join in with us. We're all aware and sympathetic and hopefully could guide them through as well. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sounded to be trouble. Mute someone who's feedback right now. Okay, so back to Lisa. Sorry, there was a bit of feedback. I think on your microphone. I think it was on just on. Was it me? No, no, it was just on Lisa's microphone. I just, I just at the end there. So back to you. Then I'll, I'll make yeah. sure the sound works. <laughs> so how do, you, have you been able to appeal? to like the younger generation and getting involved with the group, you know, because um, I've noticed small community, uh, small groups on Twitter from around five, you know, and they want to get into this. It's like they're appealing to get in type of groups. So have you been able to appeal to like a younger group to join? Sorry, I, I'm just going to sort the sound out. Lisa, you should, you should go back on in, in just like a couple of seconds. Yeah, I think it's a really important question because a lot of the work that you used to do was in school. So I guess that would not have happened as usual. 
So, anyway, yeah. Yeah, we And the second um, April of... I'm sorry, Lisa. Lisa, your 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 phone is cut. Uh, your your connection is cutting off. So we're going to try again. Okay. Let's try again. How's that? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Let's let's see if the sound can pick up again. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll leave you on the mic. Yeah. Okay. We, we were due to go into a primary school in Kikodi to give us an assembly um, to the whole school, and we we're going to be speaking about our different faiths, um, just to give the children an uh, just an outline and to see the real person behind the stories they may hear um, from one particular person in the school. I know that Mansoor went into a primary school on Culture Day and um, delivered um, his faith um, on that particular day. We do want to connect with youth groups throughout Fife as well. Together. So at the heart of my life is intergenerational work, connecting older and younger people together as well. So I, I've got the tools um, that we can do it, but we can only really do so much at a certain speed as well. And um, all these things take time and to make connections because we're a voluntary group as well. So it's a case of doing it when we're available in our own spare time as well. I don't know whether anybody else wants to say any more about that? Uh, I think that's the, 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 mostly is, is to get through to, to schools and, uh, and youth groups. Um, other, other than that, uh, the only other thing I could think of is maybe going, going through the high street, but when I've seen uh, uh, preachers normally on the high street, they're not very well received, especially especially in the bigger cities in Glasgow. There's a lot of abuse that they get, uh, so you got to give it to them for uh, for having the courage to do that. Um, we've been going to, from the mosque's point of view. We've been going to the schools uh, since I've come uh, um, at the beginning. So I know that in um, View Fourth High School, they do Islam as a uh, uh, as a higher subject, that, that's the chosen religion. So uh, I, I normally go there every year just to deliver uh, a lesson to them. Uh, but I think that, uh, well, we started this and then uh, with Five Interfaith and then COVID, the pandemic started, uh, but we had very big plans uh, to show like this united front of all the religions to go together uh, in every school. So we're going to I haven't contacted them yet because they've just started and I, I just thought that we'll let the schools get settled in and get their routines ready before we contact them because they've already got so much to deal with at the moment. Um, but uh, definitely within, uh, in the near future, hopefully if, you know, if lockdown doesn't come back on again and, and the, the virus decreases, um, uh, we'll be contacting every, every school and trying to reach out to the youth uh, in that way. And I think there's, is it YMCA? Is, is that the local youth group? Um, I'm not sure if anybody's, if Louisa, if you've contacted them or, um, but we, we can look into that as well. Well, I think it's important to remember that we have had meetings with the MSYPs and I think it's important to remember that it's not only older people that are um, digitally excluded. I think it's a, a sign of poverty and it's a sign of our community. A lot of people don't have phones and, and even if they do have phones, they don't have, A, they don't have a phone or if they do have a phone, it's not a smartphone. So they don't have Facebook, they don't have, a lot of young people have totally been excluded throughout this lockdown. And um, I think, 
making links with them is about inclusion and about showing some kind of compassion and some community building around them rather than going and telling them about our faith because I think that that's kind of at the at the bottom of the list I think first of all we need to engage them and they're a bit disengaged from um, the digital exclusion that's been going on and I think now the back at school it's difficult as well because the schools are clearly not allowing external visitors they want as, as few people as possible on campus and to retain a kind of bubble approach really so um, to keep the school as safe as possible and to keep the visitors as safe as possible we're trying to reduce that as much as possible so I think at, at this moment in time school visits and young people have had a really really tough time and it's difficult for them even yet and even now um, they're coming to a stage where maybe we're hearing if if somebody's tested positive in a school then a class might be isolated for a fortnight so they're off school again for another fortnight and then we're back into food parcels and digital exclusion and all of that a fortnight at a time so I think young people are really need us they really need a lot of help at the moment and I think they're having, having a really really tough time yeah I would say young people are having a tough time only because uh, at the moment in the news it's like people are blaming them at the moment for mm. the vibe you know for the virus going back up again and you know and sometimes it's like but at the beginning you told us it didn't affect this age group and then all of a sudden it's like put all the blame on the to this age group group because you know if the second you know if the second wave turns up kind of thing you know so i do feel sorry for students and i feel like schools have tried to help with technology and everything and i do know um there's been some businesses in the local areas that uh, got off they as soon as lockdown was put in place they stepped up and says look we have technology if you contact us or contact your school we can help you you know to borrow and you just handed it back in when you were finished so but i still feel there's things that need to be done to sort of help and everything especially now that they're back at school and that but there's also i think the yeah sorry it's again I'm sorry, I missed the last bit of it. No, it's just something that at the humanist group you've been discussing a little bit about the, the actions that as, as humans we, we're meant to actually take on uh, and do and help communities at the moment or is it something that uh, you, you have, have said is more like this is linked to faith or is it something that you think that it is an interfaith kind of movement? No, we, we certainly uh, try to not remove but challenge any connection or, or requirements that doing good charitable work and caring for humans and, and equality etc is was only could only be achieved through our faith. We come to the same conclusion or similar conclusions looking through reason and evidence. That's really the very limited difference an approach about how we get to how we achieve the same aims. So, so we don't really focus on that within the interface group here. Nobody talks about their own religion and what makes that so special. So I think we fit in with that reasonably well, given that we don't have any handed down rules or regulations. It is is our, uh, our own ability and reason and opinion, which could be wrong. It just uh, leads us to arrive at the work that we try to do, which is about autonomy, really. I mean, if there was one word, it would be like letting people behave as they wish, as long as they're not handling anybody else. Mm -hmm. now, that is my personal view of it. But, uh, yeah, I wondered if you could say a little bit more about the, the Baha'i approach to faith and uh, uh, all being one of the different uh, religions approaches are, are they all being close to the one approach? 
Oh, it cut off again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of the principles of the Baha'i faith is oneness of God, oneness of religion, and oneness of mankind. So um, we believe that the, uh, you know, the older religion, the old come from one source and the old come at different time. But their message is all one really and um, is only the social message of the religion changes according to the time. But the spiritual part of the religion is all one really. And they all you know, say to be kind to each other, to be trustworthy and to be kind. So, but they all come at different time according to the need of human, of mankind, because mankind is now mature than, you know, a thousand years ago. Uh, so the new messenger comes at different time uh, to guide uh, mankind and brings a new message, which is relevant to the, to, uh, to the to the time to the age that we live in, but uh, they are all like a chapter of a book, uh, or they are like a teachers at the you know in this the primary one says uh, the primary teacher one teaches children according to their knowledge and but uh, that teacher has also the capacity to teach primary seven. Uh, so all the manifestation, all the prophets of the God that they have come, they are all from one source. And to be a Baha'i, you need to believe that all these messengers, they all, uh, all have come from one source. And, uh, and Baha'is believe that Baha'u'llah is the new manifestation for today. Can I just ask before we round up for the day, um, what do you hope for the future, you know, as a group and being part of a community to move forward within what we're dealing with at this precise moment? I think as it's diversity B, I have to say that I think our diversity is our strength. Um, we learn so much from each other and bring so much to each other as well. So um, I I hope that interface goes on from strength to strength, and I hope that diversity week goes on from strength to strength. Because, um, uh, I totally believe in seeing our communities at work and seeing them together and see the richness that we've got. I think it's really important that we hang on to this and celebrate our differences and our diversity. All right, enough. Uh, a few words before we wrap up. The sound has been uh, not too good. So, last few comments, and then I'll see if I can uh, make sure that we have a copy on Facebook that has better sound than this. <laughs> <laughs> um, just wanted to say um, for us to grow stronger, it's great having so many members, but it'd be great to have more active members and um, people that are wanting to be with each other rather than on the sidelines as well. Um, to be present in the community, as Judy says, um, to actually be seen, be doing things, supporting all faiths, supporting all communities as well, and just showing people that we've got a spirituality, a faith for our individuals, and if anybody wants to ask us it, we, we, we can be quite open about it, but we're not putting our individual faith onto anybody else in particular. We're not preaching at anybody at any of our meetings whatsoever. So it's a case of um, just a coming together and wanting to, to share and wanting to help out in our communities as well, to broaden people's horizons and to let them know that there is something out there for, for everyone and it's a case that if you don't feel comfortable with one set of values, perhaps somebody else in the Five Into Faith group has a set of values that you you feel, yes, that's me, that's what I believe in and um, to find out more and to be amongst that group um, of people as well. Great, thank you. I'll ask you a comment before we wrap up and I'll... 
because we, we're reaching our our quota on data <laughs> for Facebook as well. No, so I pass to Lisa then for to wrap up. Um, I would like to thank everyone that's came to the of Faith Group today. You know, this has been a really interesting conversation that we've had. Um, I'd like to thank all the other interviews that we've had during the week um, in the musical acts. Uh, today we've got um, Decanted as a live musical act at four o'clock on Facebook, so please come back then. And tomorrow, as the final day, we have Demi McMahon singing live 1 p.m. So I would like to thank everybody that's been listening in and thank you for being part of Diversity Week this year. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Sorry about the connection. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.